Welcome to NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab, operated by the California Institute of Technology. Our mission is to reach for the stars. As pioneers, our job is to do what has never been done before. We seek out new frontiers inside our solar system and beyond. And then we bring all this knowledge back to Earth to work for us here on our planet. For all these reasons, I hope you'll agree with me that JPL is a national treasure. We're glad you are here, and we hope you enjoy your visit. This is NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, the center for robotic space exploration. JPL gave America its first Earth-orbiting satellite, Explorer 1, in 1958. The first interplanetary spacecraft, Mariner 2, in 1962 and some of the first close-up views of the near and distant shores in the universe. One, we have ignition and liftoff of an Galileo Zero spacecraft. Zero and liftoff of the Stardust spacecraft and returning. liftoff of the Cassini spacecraft on a billion-mile trek to Saturn. Here in the cosmic ocean of outer space, dotted here and there with billions of island galaxies, we are adrift. We live in a cluster called the Local Group, in a pinwheel of stars called the Milky Way. With our first gaze upward at this nightly display, the search began for its origin, its structure, its meaning. For thousands of years, we could only search with our eyes and our imagination. Actual visits to those distant worlds remained a dream. Those distant worlds turn out to be nine planets that coalesced out of a cosmic dust cloud some four and a half billion years ago. Their orbits and their evolution, determined by the gravitation of mass and radiation of a newborn star, our sun. Our life source is an ongoing thermonuclear furnace. Its internal fires burn at 27 million degrees Fahrenheit. Supersonic streams of ionized gas, the solar wind, slam into the Earth's magnetic field and create the auroras, shimmering curtains of light at the North and South Poles. The nearest planet to the sun is Mercury. First seen close up by JPL's Mariner 10 spacecraft in the mid 1970s. So close to the sun that its surface bakes at more than 700 degrees Fahrenheit, Mercury is a battered, barren world of rock and iron where no life could exist. Amazingly, radar observations of Mercury's North Pole suggest possible water ice in the protected shadows of some craters. Venus, second planet from the sun, is often called the morning or evening star because it appears so bright in the early morning and evening hours. Mariner 10 takes these first pictures of Venus through a violet filter, showing the planet shrouded in clouds of sulfuric acid. In the early 1990s, another JPL spacecraft, Magellan, uses a microwave radar to see through those clouds revealing a tortured surface and many strange landforms, but no life. Its atmosphere, 90 times thicker than ours, traps solar heat in a greenhouse effect gone wild. It's hot enough to melt lead. Of the nine planets in our solar system, this is the lucky one, Earth. Far enough from the sun's heat to escape overheating, yet near enough to avoid freezing, its environment is conducive to life. Here, simple molecules became complex molecules, and over long, long periods of time, evolve into ever more complex, self-replicating organisms, and eventually into us. Earth's gravity is strong, 
but not strong enough to hold our imagination, our machines, or ourselves. Twelve American astronauts have walked upon the surface of the moon. Their visits were preceded by JPL's surveyor and ranger spacecraft. Mars, fourth planet from the sun. In 1965, the quest reaches the red planet. JPL's Mariner 4 spacecraft returns to Earth the first close-up images of the Martian surface, a surface one 19th century astronomer thought was crisscrossed with canals. The Mariner shows us a barren, cratered world with no canals, no life. Two Viking spacecraft, each consisting of an orbiter and lander, arrive on station in 1976. The landers scoop up soil and rock samples, analyzing them for any hint of life, while the orbiters circle the planet, compiling an atlas of more than 90% of the Martian surface. Features that look a lot like dry riverbeds suggest water once flowed on Mars, and water is essential to life. But where is that Martian water today? Buried beneath the surface as permafrost? Frozen in the polar caps as ice? Or simply evaporated? And is there, was there, life? In 1997, JPL sends the Pathfinder mission to Mars and its first roving robot, Sojourner, a rover about the size of a child's wagon. It returns a wealth of images and scientific data as it rolls about 91 meters around the ancient floodplain where it landed. The first comprehensive mapping of the entire planet is assigned to the Mars Global Surveyor. It continuously examines terrain, weather, and atmosphere unraveling clues not only to the evolution of Mars, but to Earth as well. Between Mars and the outer planets are the orphans of the solar system, the asteroids, like Gaspra. Asteroids may be the remnants of a planet either broken apart or unable to form. In a wide belt, they continually bang into each other, leaving these battered, oblong shapes. And some, like Ida, even have their own moon. They do not prepare you for what comes next. Jupiter, the largest planet in the solar system. It could hold more than a thousand Earths. Like the sun, it's a giant ball of hydrogen. Unlike the sun, it never turned on the thermonuclear switch circled by swirling belts of fluid-like storms. Its most prominent feature, the Great Red Spot, is a tempest 25,000 kilometers long. It's been raging for over 300 years. The twin Voyager spacecraft fly by Jupiter in 1979, en route to the outer reaches of the solar system. Like archaeologists stumbling on an ancient city, the Voyagers make many new and exciting discoveries including a previously unknown set of rings. Indeed, Jupiter proves to be so fascinating, we send another spacecraft there, this time to set up an orbiting research station, Galileo. An instrumented probe dives down through the cloud layers and transmits data on Jupiter's environment before the enormous pressures and heat crush and melt the probe's titanium hull. Meanwhile, the Galileo orbiter continues to study Jupiter's fierce magnetosphere and its four major moons. Ganymede, the largest moon in the solar system, is also the only one known to have its own magnetic field. It has a metallic core, a soft ice mantle, a thin grooved icy crust, and even a thin atmosphere. Heavily cratered Callisto has one of the oldest untouched surfaces in the solar system. Europa's surface is remarkably smooth, 
yet crisscrossed with lines that are probably fractures in its icy surface. If there is a heat source beneath that surface, there may be an ocean as well, and perhaps primitive life. Little Io provided the biggest surprise. Its interior is heated and spews molten sulfur from active volcanoes, the first discovered outside the Earth. If Jupiter is the giant, Saturn is the gem. Serenely beautiful with its exquisite rings, it levitates like a heavenly gyroscope. Though nearly the size of Jupiter, it is far less dense and much lighter. If placed in one of our oceans, it would float. Its rings range from dust particles to mountain-sized and are thought to be remnants of shattered moons. With 18 known moons, Saturn orchestrates its own miniature solar system. The moon that intrigues us most is Titan, described as the Earth in a deep freeze. The surface may hold clues to how life formed on primitive Earth. We'll know more in 2004 when the Cassini spacecraft arrives at Saturn. It will parachute a probe called Huygens to Titan's surface. Two billion miles out, our search party now catches sight of pale blue Uranus. It is the planet knocked on its side, perhaps the result of a collision with a large object billions of years ago. Now with its rings and moons still intact, the whole system appears as a target rolling around the sun. Like its larger sisters, Uranus has its own family of moons, at least 15 of them, the largest with a diameter of almost 1,600 kilometers. Voyager 2's closest approach brought us near little Miranda. Heavily cratered with canyons 19 kilometers deep, its violent past is now captured in a frozen still life. Voyager's final stop on the grand tour of the outer planets, Neptune, three and a half billion miles away. Receiving only a glimmer of sunlight, it was expected to be less active. In fact, it is the windiest. Its winds blow at 2,400 kilometers per hour and make earthly hurricanes seem like gentle breezes. And feature this giant storm the size of Earth called the Great Dark Spot. As Voyager flew over Neptune's North Pole, heading out into interstellar space, it photographed Triton at minus 391 degrees Fahrenheit. It spouts geyser-like plumes. Triton's orbit is opposite to Neptune's rotation, indicating that it's not an original member of this planetary system, but a captured object. Though broadcast at the speed of light, radio signals from the spacecraft still take several hours to reach Earth. That's how far away these worlds are. Giant antennas spaced equidistantly around Earth at three locations receive those signals. They make up the Deep Space Network, the DSN. About the size of a football field, they're powerful enough to detect signals from the edge of the solar system, sent with less power than the light bulb in your refrigerator. These great adventures trace their origins back to a group of Caltech students conducting simple rocket experiments in the late 1930s in the Arroyo Seco in Pasadena, California. Those experiments led to the laboratory's work in solid propellant rockets during World War II, as well as its name. In 1958, JPL was transferred from the U.S. Army 
to the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, and given a new mission, the Robotic Exploration of Space. Space exploration is a practical business, benefiting not only science and engineering, but people everywhere enjoy a treasure trove of information and useful technology. For example, JPL researchers are looking for objects whose paths just might cross Earth's. The resulting impacts of these wayward bodies have been well documented. When the 21 fragments of the Shoemaker-Levy comet struck Jupiter, they released energies equivalent to firing every nuclear weapon on Earth. The knowledge we've gained off the Earth is having wide applications on it. Computer software developed by JPL allows commercial airlines to use navigational satellite data to locate their jetliners in the skies within a meter or two of their actual positions. JPL technology that pioneered the imaging of distant planets is used by hospitals to chart the inner surface of human organs. This self-examination includes the Earth as well. JPL built the first civilian imaging radar satellite. Using a stereoscopic-like technique called interferometry, the shuttle radar topography mission creates the most detailed 3D maps of the Earth's land masses, while another instrument called an infrared imaging spectrometer helps geologists locate the distribution and concentrations of minerals. Our Topex Poseidon spacecraft, orbiting the Earth since 1992, detected the start of the 1997-1998 El Nino and gave the world an early warning of the destruction to expect from this massive ocean disturbance. The microwave limb sounder charts the cycles of the Earth's upper atmosphere, especially the ozone layer, keeping an omnipresent watch on this protective cover. In the New Millennium program, JPL engineers are developing a wide range of technologies for future space exploration and proof testing them in actual missions. Some sensors under development are no bigger than a coin. Our most important new search lies beyond the solar system. The infrared astronomical satellite sensing the heat from deep space saw a universe we had never seen before. Newer, more sensitive infrared telescopes are probing deeper and farther into this realm. In our Origins program, telescopes will employ new techniques like interferometry. Space-based platforms will employ several telescopes to mimic the observing power of a single telescope that otherwise would be too large to launch. How far will we see? From our wide-field planetary camera aboard the Hubble telescope, we witness the birth of stars in the Great Eagle Nebula. If there is life beyond Earth, will we ever make contact? The questions, like the search, are never-ending. Every atom in your body was once inside a star. Every star in the universe has a common ancestor. So if life is ever discovered beyond our solar system, it will be something of a family reunion. Because we are all made of stardust, it seems especially appropriate that a spacecraft bearing that name will return to Earth particles from a comet. Other instruments riding aboard the spacecraft may help us gain the knowledge of our own origins. The quest for the answers inspires many. The answers themselves will touch us all.
Welcome to Outer Space.